setting up our first wood shop, one of the things we knew we were going to need is a dust collection system. Now, about two, two and a half years ago, I saw one of my favorite YouTubers, Next Level Carpentry, with this piece of engineering right here. This is the Harvey Gyro Air G700, and we're going to talk about this in this video. So, going back to Next Level Carpentry and seeing this on his channel, I was thinking if I ever get a shop, the opportunity to build a shop, which I am now, um, I'm going to get this thing. So, what happened is I reached out to Harvey. I kind of told them what I was doing and what I wanted to do with this machine and they were like, yeah, this machine would be perfect for you. So we talked a little bit and they were actually nice enough to partner with me on this machine right here. So full disclosure, I was given this machine, but full disclosure, I was gonna buy this thing anyways. So super cool company, good folks over at Harvey. They are really, really turning some engineering out in the woodworking scene. So let's talk about this machine and why I chose it. So the first reason I chose this machine doesn't even start in the shop. It starts out here in front of the house. Now I live in a residential neighborhood, right? My shop is a two car garage shop, 22 by 22 roughly. And you know, I, I wanna be considerate of the people around me. You know, I'm, there's gonna be noise coming out of here. I'm gonna have joiners and planers and everything running in here eventually. But if I can take away from that noise level with a low level dust collection system, why not? So this dust collection system here is the quietest dust collector on the market as far as decibels go. So number one reason is to get that low noise level in a neighborhood environment like this. So yeah, reason number one, we just wanna be considerate of those around us and we also wanna be considerate of our own selves. You know, we're gonna have other machines in here, it's gonna be loud, like I said, we'll be wearing hearing protection, but anything we can do to kind of get those noise levels down is a benefit for everyone around. So reason number two is going to be, I love that this thing was compact and mobile. So you can see I've got this kind of in a space that would otherwise be a waste of space. You know, I've got it underneath my cut hub here and it's, it's a perfect place. But if I wanted to move this thing, the compactness and the mobility of it is just super cool. So it's got an eight foot cable. If you guys have been following along, you know we had the electrician come out and wire this 220 dedicated, especially for this machine. But if I wanted to move it, I can just grab it, it's on casters, and I can pull it out from where it is and just take it somewhere else. Now, thankfully, this machine, you know, we're not gonna be moving it around a whole lot because it has that perfect dedicated place over there, but you never know. When you're going through and building a shop or if you guys have ever, ever tried to fit out a van or a truck, you know it's like one day, you oh, I've got this perfect setup, then the next day it's like, Actually, that doesn't work at all. So having the ability to move this thing around and change up the shop layout just really appealed to me. Now that we've got the machine rolled out here out in the open where you can kind of see the whole thing, let's talk about it and the basic breakdown. So basically your, your intake is down here. This is uh, the intake port and we've got the splitter on it. This comes with the machine when you get it, but it's got your two most common sizes, your four inch down here and then your two and a half inch over here. And we are going to run this one to the miter saw. I don't know what I was thinking, thinking I'm gonna use a, a vacuum when I have this thing in the shop. My mind just was like, oh, I'm gonna run a vacuum to the miter saw. Absolutely not. We're gonna use this machine to collect the dust from the miter saw. And it's got a ton of CFM. So I'm looking to see how it performs when we get all these hoses hooked up eventually. So anyways, Everything comes in through this port, intake port, everything comes up, and then it goes through the gyro air system. And remember, this machine is called the Gyro Air G700, and it's kind of the smaller of the gyro air systems. There's two bigger machines than this if you need, need that in a bigger shop. So on the system, this is kind of the beauty of the collection here. So with this, you should never get a clog in your system because the way this technology works. Now, I'm not gonna pretend to sit here and understand everything that went into this engineering to get this to happen, but here's a basic breakdown of what I understand. This was built with the idea of axial centrifugation. I think I said that the right way. 
And what that is, is basically in physics, like an airstream that is created in here with the mechanism that moves in there, it separates the dust into three different locations, starting with the large particles here, the medium particles here, and then the fine particles here. So you see how this, this port right here goes down, there's that, that section, all the big stuff gets dropped into there. Then the next port, you can see, goes down right here. All the medium stuff gets dropped into here. And then finally, you get to the end. This is all the fine stuff that gets dropped into here. Now, all the CFM that's running through this machine eventually gets exhausted through these ports in this metal right here. So everything will come out through here and it'll be clean air that goes back into the environment everything will be collected in here. Now you may be asking yourself, well, where's the dust? Like, where are you, where are you collecting this dust? Well, this opens right here. So there's this, this door that drops down and it's really cool, they thought of everything. These are like rubber pads right here. So when it sits down, it's like a nice soft impact right there. So when this thing opens up, it's got this kind of vacuum sealed latch. You pull out this drawer and by the way, I'm just, this stuff is really cool to me, how they think of everything. They engrave the gyro air into this handle. I just like stuff like that. So you pull this drawer out, it's on bearings, and then you see the dust that you've collected. Now going back to what I said earlier, you know, you've got heavier particles in here on this side. And then when you grab dust from this side over here, you can see that this is a lot thicker. And this is obviously a little bit more medium size. And then finally, the really small stuff ends up over here in this filter. And this is actually a self-cleaning dust collector. But we're gonna save that for a future video when we actually put this thing through some hours of work and we'll get to see how good this thing self-cleans itself. But that's a, that's a whole nother topic that I could go into. So yeah, we've never hooked this thing up to a tool yet. All the dust that you see in here was just us routing some boards on the router table and then we swept it into a pile and we simply sucked it up with this. So we just hooked that up there and then sucked up our dust pile and that's everything that you see in there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set this up and you'll get to see and hear how this thing works. And then one other thing actually, before we hook up the planer, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on and so you guys can hear how it sounds with no other tools on. This is super cool. So it came with this remote right here. It's got an on and off switch. So here we go. Without further ado, I present to you the low level decibels of this machine. Check it out. not doing anything to the audio right now. It's still the same microphone. I'm not affecting it in any way with editing or anything. So there's what it kind of sounds like on the lowest setting. And it has a ton of suction right there. So this is this kind of minimum CFM right here. And I think this would be good for just running it to like miter saw or maybe even a router with a smaller dust port like that. But for the bigger machines, we definitely want to crank this thing up because they'll be throwing a lot more dust, a lot more shavings. So that's what this little dial is right here. We can turn this up. You can see it's on 40 right now and it'll go to 75, you can see that. So I'll just slowly start cranking this up and then I'll also keep talking as it starts to build up. So you can see we're slowly dialing this up. And I believe the max kind of CFM is somewhere around 1,200 cubic feet per minute of suction. So we'll keep cranking it up and I'll keep talking so you can hear it. So we're getting ready for liftoff. This is your captain speaking. And there we go. So this right here, Freaking suck.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the runway. Time right now in Dallas-Fort Worth is 2.30. Weather is 67 degrees. Thank you for flying Gyro Air G700. <laughs> so then with the remote, we can just turn it off. And it has a slow stop too, and you can hear it kind of wind down. So yeah, that's how the machine sounds when it's on and through all the variable um, adjustments for how much CFM is coming through it. So now let's get to the fun part of actually collecting some dust with it. Oh yeah, and real quick, before we do that, and we'll show you this as the dust is coming through here, there is a little port up here. It's a window where you can kind of see some of the engineering taking place. So we'll be able to look through that port and that port and see all the dust flying around. So it, it should be pretty cool. So for the board that we're gonna send through the planer, we're gonna throw this two by six through. Number one, we have it. Number two, it's cheap and it's gonna make a lot of shavings. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna kinda sacrifice myself for you guys. I'm just gonna run this through and show you what this machine does without any kind of dust collection and how this ends up in the environment, in the shop, in your lungs. So you really don't want to be doing this a whole lot without the proper protective equipment. But for those of you who have not seen a planer and the kind of shavings and sawdust that it lets loose, this may shock you. So for this one, we're only going to take off, we're just going to take off a 16th. 16, or let's do 3.30 seconds. We'll do 3.30 seconds. I'll bring this down. And what we did is we closed the garage door because while the gyro is quiet, the dust collector, the planer is not. The planer is very loud. So we got our hearing protection on. I'm going to throw my safety glasses on and you'll be able to see everything that comes out of here. Then we'll hook it up to the dust collector and you'll see nothing, hopefully. So here we go. Yeah, so you can see right there, just from one run through the planer of taking off 330 seconds of this wood, what kind of mess you can end up with, what's in the environment, and just it's just bad, just, this is bad. So let's go ahead and throw the Harvey on there, see, see how good it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on, and then I think we'll kind of start it on the lower setting and then we'll see how good it does. But based off, like this hose right here is shaking from all the suction. And then I can hear all the suction coming in through the planer as well. So I'm pretty sure even on that low setting, we're gonna be good. But we'll try it on the low setting first. And there's just a storm of dust, just like a violent storm of dust spinning around in there. That's crazy. So I didn't feel anything in the air. I didn't see anything come out. I think because this thing has so much suction, like even the typical, you know, little debris that you would get around here is all being sucked up through this. So you're not getting really anything. 
So this right here, all, all what you see right here will not happen in this shop. And look, from one, one run of a board, John's sweater got destroyed. <laughs> all this stuff got covered in sawdust. My machete, I mean, what, like, this is crazy. My machete is covered in sawdust. My samurai carpenter sword that I cut foam beams with is, uh, yeah, we don't have to, we won't have to worry about this at all. Um, this, this thing freaking sucks. So first impression of this thing, you guys got to see it the first time like we did, used in this shop, and I'm just so happy we're not gonna have to have this everywhere. In such a small shop like this, this would get annoying real quick, and especially in a home shop where I'm gonna be going from here in, into the house, I mean, I'm gonna be dragging this stuff all everywhere, because this is one single cut from a planer, guys. This is crazy. That's the reason I did this because a lot of people, they see these videos on YouTube and they see these people making these cuts with planers, with joiners and stuff and they don't realize like what ends up in the environment, what ends up in the air and then what ultimately ends up in your lungs. So first impression of this thing, super happy to have it, super happy with this product so far. Once we put it through some good use, I'll give you guys an update on it, but you're gonna be seeing some more videos of this thing coming very soon. Um, I think it's perfect from, from my first impression. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any suggestions on how I should rig this thing up, please leave it down in the comments below. Um, this is gonna probably stay over here, like I've said, in this corner. And then as far as running the hoses, we're thinking we're just gonna let them kind of lay on the ground and then when we're not using them, just kind of push them to the side. So permanent ductwork, I kind of thought about that, running it like up the wall and across the ceiling and then having like an arm where you can hook it to machines. So I don't know, we're still figuring this thing out, but let me know what you guys think and I'll catch you on the next one.